Hello YouTube and the tribes of the horror realm and uh, welcome we're doing this is our vintage horror classic review and um, what we're doing today is we last week we got a package from Jeff aka 74 poker he had sent us a gift of a couple of uh, DVDs one of them was directly in Teresa's uh, realm and that was this two DVD Four movie collection, the Bela Lugosi classics from the AMC Monster Fest. Uh, this this DVD uh, came with four movies: The Corpse Vanishes from uh, 1942, um, The Invisible Ghost from 1941, Phantom Ship from 1936, and Scared to Death from 1947. Um, all of them are public domain titles, so they, you know, you, you may have seen them there, them included in other movie packs. But, um, of course, of course, they can, they come from various, uh, studio productions as well. Um, now the Corpse Vanishes was the first one. Um, this was, uh, one of the, um, well, what happened? Little backstory, real quick, is after the uh, '30s horror explosion and when it died down, um, the major studios kind kind of uh, gave a cold shoulder to Bela Lugosi. Uh, he had trouble finding work, other than maybe minor roles. However, uh, some of the Poverty Row studios saw um, publicity in his name as a lead. So, um, one particular studio. Monogram um, signed him to a um, nine-picture deal, and uh, this was one of them. Um, this movie is kind of, I don't know how you call it, batshit crazy. <laughs> um, you know, this, especially for a 40s film, it touches on all sorts of different aspects from... Um, you know, kidnapping and murder and um, necrophilia and uh, you know, it's just out there. It's um, Bill Lugosi plays a mad scientist who um, is married to this uh, crazed woman played by Elizabeth Russell who has a problem with her aging and the only way to keep her young is by extracting gland fluid from virgin brides. Um, so basically he uh, goes about um, subduing them at the altar and uh, where they're presumed dead but actually in a catonic state. Um, sneaks them off to his underground lab where he is able to extract the fluid with the help of um, a bizarre set of characters from an old crone, a uh, real like malicious dwarf played by uh, Angelo Rosati, um, a brutish uh, halfwit played by Frank Moran, and uh, I mean this type of movie for for its day is just really odd. I mean, you don't see him too much in those 40s films, and I think the next time you have this, you know household of bizarreness would probably be t maybe 20 odd years later when Jack Hill did Spider Baby. Um, but overall it was really entertaining film. What did you think? It was a good movie. I liked it. It, um, it, um, it had a lot of, um, it kept me interested. So it was something different and, you know, something different, you know, to be so. Well, the ghost you played a very good part in this, so I was very happy to see it. <laughs> um, the next movie was Invisible Ghost. This was the first of the monogram pictures, and um, probably one of the most in enjoyable ones. I mean, it's a little disconnected. Um, the you know the storyline is is a little odd or a little simple, um, and. A little bit of a spoiler here. There is nothing invisible, nor there is a ghost in this movie. 
could have called it anything that you could have called it the shredded wheat murders. Wouldn't have mattered. Um, in this film, though, um, Bela Lugosi portrays a very rich, kindly, well-liked, and well-respected uh, gentleman in the movie. Um, a strong departure from his usually menacing roles or very um, uh, tortured characters that he plays. Um, so it was nice to see, you know, him being able to portray a different type of character. But um, as far as what happens to his character, why don't you explain a bit? Okay. Um, every year, he um, he has dinner on his anniversary with, well, his wife ran away um, with her lover and left Bella. And every year, he celebrates his anniversary um, with his wife, but she's not there. He just has an empty seat at the table, and they have a candlelight dinner and all that, and he does this every year. But um, when his wife ran away uh, with her lover, they had a car accident, and the lover died, and actually the caretaker of Bella's home, Bella's home finds her and keeps her in the shed just trying to nurse her back to health. But she's kind of out of it. She's kind of like a little brain damage. So um, she appears at the home and she's outside the house and every night Bella sees her on the ground and it seems like she puts her in this, can of, uh, this kind of trance and he goes off killing people within the home like one every night. But the thing is, he doesn't remember doing it. So, um, I'm not going to give away the movie at the ending. You might want to pick it up to watch it. But, um, it was a pretty good film. And, um, easy to follow and, you know, it was, it was really good. It kept me interested. So, and, but, um, and Bella played very well in this movie. Another interesting aspect of this film was the performance by an actor named uh, Clarence Muse, um, an African-American actor. Um, during this period of time in the 40s, um, African-American actors were often given very minor roles mi um, and often playing servants, and their characters are portrayed as being um, simpletons or um, very... Uh, over-the-top, silly characters, uh, comic relief. Uh, Muse's character, even though he played the butler Evans, was treated with a lot of dignity. He had a lot of screen time. He was shown to be a very bright individual. Um, it was very... Um, it went against the grain of how um, African-American characters were portrayed in this period of uh, film history. Uh, Muse, unfortunately, didn't really have a, a vast uh, film career, and this really was the highlight um, for him. But overall, uh, Invisible Ghost is an excellent film. Um, runs about 60 minutes, and um, you know, you, you're, you're pretty much staring at the film and following along. Really, really enjoyable movie. Um, next film is a uh, from the from Hammer Pictures. And um, this was done in 1936. Um, and then, because uh, Hammer only released a couple of pictures back in the 30s, and they would lay dormant for maybe like 10 years before they picked up again. Um, now, this copy of Phantom Ship is probably the worst um, quality picture uh, on this DVD set. Yeah. However, uh, the reason for that is that there is very few copies of Phantom Ship out there, um, and none of them have ever survived fully intact. Um, they are missing parts of the film, which is well, well known. So, releasing of this film is to the best of their ability, so you're only seeing a um, fraction of the actual production itself. 
Um, this is this one is a story of the uh, uh, based on a true ship, the Mary Celeste, that um, they found adrift without any crew, and um, no one knows what happened to the crew. So this was their uh, liberal take on potentially what could, had happened. Um, as far as Bela's performance goes, this is one of those movies where you hear, like, it's a bad movie, and the only thing makes it watchable is a Bela Lugosi's performance. And this is, this is really true with this one. This one was more of a, um, a, dra a drama role for Bela. Um, it stepped away from him playing uh, his horror characters, the tortured souls that he normally portrayed, and it came across more as like... Um, a stage performance for him, where you know he does a bit of overacting um, in order to uh, cast his presence um, amongst everyone in the room, even though it's only on film, so he didn't have to go that far. Um, it really is what more of a whodunit. Yeah, a mystery. And um, we're not going to tell you what happens in the end. Um, this one's the longest, runs about 80 minutes. Um, but um, unfortunately is um, a bit lacking because of the um, missing elements in the film. It was a little hard to follow at times because you didn't have like certain information but it was okay it wasn't my favorite on the disc but but it was watchable you know just to see him in the different kind of role than the one you usually play. Well, you did have a favorite. Yes, I did. It was the last, last of the other discs, which was scared to death. Okay. Well, basically this movie starts off with a woman in the morgue, and she talks about how she died. So, um, basically, um, Bella plays uh, this, um, he's like a, a, an expert in like hypnotism, magician, yeah. magician, and um, he comes to visit his cousin, who is a doctor also, and um, It's a, it basically retraces the steps of how this woman passed away and it becomes a murder uh, mystery film. A big cookie cutter, introducing some shady characters um, as well as some comedic elements in a um, police detective that's trying to make good in solving a crime. Um, I saw a reporter who's trying to get a story. Uh, Lugo Lugosi shows up as the um, mysterious cousin who's the hypnotist, um, along with Angela Rosati as his uh, deaf mute um, dwarf sidekick, Igor. Um, and the, this was one of the only two films that Lugosi starred in that were in color. Uh, excuse me, let me rephrase that. This is the only film that Lugosi starred in that was colored. He did appear in a uh, 1930s Technicolor film called Viennese Nights, um, but he was only in a minor uh, shot. But as far as amount of screen time, this is really the only color film that he had done. Um, as Teresa said, it's um, uh, she li she really enjoyed it. She liked uh, how. What did you like about the look? It's cape. <laughs> yeah, they stuck a cape on him. So it kind of reminded me a little bit about Dracula. So, <laughs> so um, without getting too much into it, because it is a whodunit, far better for you to check check out the film. And again, this one runs only about uh, 60 minutes. Um, I, I am at a loss for which company put this one out. Do you remember? Uh, anyhow. Um, so, overall, you're looking at four films with maybe just over, just under four and a half hours total. So, um, you know, easily you could t have a spare moment, you could fit one of them in and uh, check them out. Um, 
again, these are public domain, so they do, they do show up in a lot of other collections. Um, this one is uh, a pretty good one for us because I hate multi-film DVDs because I never know what to file them under. Uh, but under the title Bela Lugosi Classics, that's an easy one. Um, I, I think that uh, anyone that would like to explore Bela's um, film career aside from the Universal movies that he did, this would be a, uh, a great starting point. And uh, they were really enjoyable um, movies. A lot, actually, a lot better than some modern ones that are out there as well. So, uh, Jeff, thank you very much for sending us along. We thoroughly enjoyed watching them. Great. And I'm sure we're going to be revisiting them again. Um, mm -hmm. Especially, it would be good around Halloween time through the month of October, yeah. you know. Throw in 60 minutes of uh, The Corpse Vanishes or, you know, Invisible Ghost, and uh, we're good. So, thank you very much for watching our uh, Vintage Film Classic Review. Thank you. Bye.